I'm Peter Mansbridge. <laughs> Thank you, Edmonton. This is going to be a very special evening. Now, this was the question we asked hockey fans around the world. Which was the best team ever to play the game? <laughs> Now think about that. The best team ever to play the game, it's a tough question. It's not so easy, is it? We all have our preferences. We all have loyalties linked to our hometowns and our family histories. We all have special memories entwined with watershed moments in our lives. Our greatest heroes often are those who made a lasting impression during our childhood. The stuff of hockey card fantasies, and that first magical visit to a legendary rink. Ask anyone to name their favorite team, and it would probably be drawn from there. But the best team in a century of NHL hockey? That's a different proposition. Every season produces a champion, but not every season produces a team for the ages. There are a lot of ways to win hockey games. And there are a lot of ways to win the Stanley Cup. It can be done with smothering defense, by riding a hot goaltender, through unbending discipline, and relentless checking and tactical genius that erases scoring chances and sucks the life out of an opponent. Perhaps you remember the neutral zone trap. Perhaps you'd rather forget it. But the best team ever would have to be the team of your dreams. One that exemplified everything that is thrilling and beautiful about the sport. That didn't just win games. That didn't just win the cup. But did it with style, with elan. Did it in a way that took your breath away, no matter your loyalties that made Leafs fans and Habs fans, Flames fans and Canucks and Jets and Sens fans and all the rest put loyalties aside and acknowledge that no one, no one did it better. And fans are the point here. More than three and a half million of them from every hockey-loving corner of the planet. This choice, it wasn't made by a committee, by a bunch of sports writers, by old cronies gathered together behind closed doors, or by analytics geniuses crunching the numbers. This was a choice made by those who most love the game. Now, close your eyes for a second and remember. Remember the speed, the skill, the swagger, the genius. Remember the greatest player who ever lived at the height of his powers. Remember the rushing defenseman who was a true heir to Doug Harvey and Bobby Orr. Remember the burning eyes and straight line determination of the local kid with that unique combination of skill and aggression. Remember snipers and bangers and guys who rode shotgun who could drop them if required. Remember a team that was always on the attack. Down by three, no problem, they'd score four. And remember the goalie good enough to let his teammates play creative, risk-taking hockey without much of a conscience? Remember how they jumped out of the gate, unbeaten in their first 15 games of the season? So much for the Stanley Cup hangover. Remember how they hit the playoffs flying, setting scoring record after scoring record, including 44 goals in a six-game semifinal victory over the Blackhawks. 
remember the deciding game of the 1985 Stanley Cup Finals against the Flyers? It was a master class in the fine art of hockey. Gretzky behind the back to Curry. Messier stealing the puck and setting up Lindstrom. Gretzky crossing the blue line, finding space, flipping a no-look behind the back pass to Coffey. Coffey blasting one from the point. Messier stealing another and scoring on a breakaway. Curry to Krushelniski to Gretzky and back to Krushelniski. Tic-tac-toe. Coffee to Curry to Gretzky. And then one more steal, one more breakaway, one more goal from Mess. Now, no team is perfect. There's no platonic ideal when it comes to flesh and blood hockey players. Even those Oilers, even those Oilers, they did lose a few. And the debate certainly doesn't end here. You can make a case for other teams in other times, including a few that wore the same colors. But tonight, the votes are in. And this one remarkable collection of hockey talent stands alone.